Ah, the tranquility of a goose and gander ushering their offspring across a small inland lake. Yes, it's a thing of beauty. Canada geese, or Canadian geese as some call them, is a large, majestic, migrating bird. Problem is, many geese no longer migrate, choosing instead to hang out in a single area year round. In an overabundance, they can become a nuisance for inland lake homeowners and can generate a negative impact on the ecology of the water. Hello everyone, I'm Kim Stricker and welcome to Hook and Look. Although it may not be exactly a fishing video, the topic does however relate to the waters we fish, swim, and enjoy. So let me get right to the point, goose poop. Geese are herbivorous grazers and they are a big bird. And as you would expect, they eat a lot. In turn, they poop a lot. According to a 2006 study by Fillion, Kidd, and Aguirre, each goose poops one to two pounds a day. With that said, geese, especially in abundance, are major contributors of phosphorus and nitrogen in inland lakes. These nutrients come directly from goose excrement and accelerate algae and aquatic weed growth and can even spread bacteria such as E. coli. The technical term for this occurrence is called guanotrophication. Now if the birds eat the aquatic weeds from the lake and then poop it back in the lake, they are simply cycling the nutrients back to the lake. No big deal. However, the problem occurs when they feed off neighboring lawns and fields then return to the water to poop. This is importing nutrients to the lake, impacting the water chemistry in a negative fashion. The more geese, the greater the impact. An event such as this, where hundreds of birds take up residency for several weeks on a lake, fly off periodically to feed on open fields, then return to the home lake to dump thousands of dark green droppings all over the ice is likely a threat to a healthy ecosystem. So in short, the point I'm getting at is too many birds, too many poops, too many problems. So how do you control them? Well, there are contractors that do just that. We're Gooseworks and we are a goose management company. We've been around for over 20 years. Uh, we work uh, all over the state of Michigan, uh, primary in the lower half and uh, we provide goose control services for commercial properties. The Goose Roundup program uh, was developed by the Michigan DNR uh, at least 25 years ago. And with the growing population of the Canada geese, uh, lake owners were looking for a solution, were asking the DNR for a solution. So they actually came up with this Goose Roundup program, which is corralling the birds and relocating them during their period of molt in June and uh, it became very popular. The DNR uh, outsourced it to contractors like ourselves, and uh, it's one of the most popular Canada geese program that the DNR has put together. Very unique for the state of Michigan. Very few other states do what we do. The Goose Roundup program is only effective if the birds are in molt. If birds can fly away, then we can't catch them. We can't corral them. So we can determine if a bird is in molt or not by seeing whether they drop their flight feathers. The flight feathers normally cover up a white band around the tail, and if the flight feathers have been dropped during molt, that white band will become visible. So we can determine if they can fly or not. It helps us put together a strategy when we're trying to corral birds. The negatives of having an out of proportion amount of geese per uh, population is that, uh, well, they leave a lot of mess on the lawns, but uh, they can raise the E. coli levels in the lakes itself, no, no, no. and that prohibits the people from enjoying it swimming and kayaking and other recreational activities. It is a concern, yet it's fascinating to watch how they corral them. Kurt Melhaff shows us that there is some skill involved as well. At times, it requires a keen eye, lightning reflexes, and the speed and agility of a gazelle. Now watch the accuracy of the net toss in slow motion. How's that for a snag? Job well done. <laughs> 